I'm happy to introduce Mark Burbeck. Um, he is CEO of a startup in England called export.net. And I've known Mark for the last few years through my work on Xforms. And um, the nice thing about what Mark's built that he's going to show you today is um, he's taken a set of fundamental technologies like Xforms and the browser and the fact that you can do XML HTTP requests and there are nice things like Google Web APIs. So he's taken all of these things and put together what is a very nice framework for both authoring web mashups and then deploying those mashups in a number of ways, including as little applications that show up on the sidebar or the system tray or whatever. Um, Mark first showed me this about three years ago, this notion of um, you know, being able to take a little web application and then host it outside the browser on the system tray. And of course, today everybody talks about that and the notion of dashboard widgets and gadgets. So I'll let Mark describe in greater detail what he does and show you, you know, show you the details of his work rather than um, trying to summarize it myself. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. I'll just turn off. Um, Okay, thank you very much, Raman. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. So, as Raman said, um, this, the space we're, we're particularly interested in is um, trying to build applications uh, using um, standard languages um, like XHTML, XForms, uh, JavaScript. Um, trying to build, uh, trying to sort of blur the distinction between um, the desktop application and the web application, uh, which obviously that's what everybody says they're doing. So uh, luckily I've got some time now to explain what I mean by that as opposed to uh, what I think other people mean. Um, so to, to um, oh, by the way, if anybody, uh, feel free to interject at any point and ask questions and everything, because it's, uh, it's probably a lot easier than trying to hold everything till the end, uh, assuming there are questions to ask. Um, it's probably easier because I'd, I'd like to show code and uh, you know source and stuff like that. So um, feel free to just um, shout out and ask questions. Um, so where are we at today um, in terms of uh, applications? Um, well, obviously there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, here we are in Google, you know, home of a lot of it, uh, where people are building uh, web applications or what people call web applications, applications that run in the browser that sort of take on. Um, quite a lot of the functionality, um, a great deal of the functionality of a, of a traditional desktop application. Um, that's not the only thing that people mean by web applications, but um, and there's, a, there's some applications that don't necessarily have a, have a mirror um, uh, in the desktop world, but generally a lot of very clever, th very clever things are going on um, uh, in, in this space uh, where people are, are creating um, uh, applications that run in the browser. So that's sort of what we mean by web application, I think. Then obviously as well, people are getting very excited about the idea of gadgets, uh, what people are calling gadgets. Um, these generally though uh, run also inside the browser, but many to a page. So you have this idea of uh, a number of different gadgets sitting on some kind of home page. Um, and for those gadgets to break out of the browser, uh, you generally need some kind of framework that gets installed. Uh, and there are a number of these, uh, increasing number of these um, appearing uh, where people are creating uh, uh, desktop frameworks that you install that allow you to run uh, different types of gadgets, um, ranging from you know, the ones that are in the Mac, uh, the dashboard, and this all the way through to um, uh, uh, the Google desktop API and, the, and different kinds of things. Um, So I think the, uh, the, the web applications is, is uh, for me, perhaps the most exciting because um, it, it starts to solve a problem, not because the functionality of the web applications themselves start to um, mirror that on the desktop, although obviously they're, they're improving and uh, different applications are getting more and more powerful, particularly with, a, with the server taking on more and more of the role. So we, uh, we have applications now where you can do um, image processing where you're constantly sending the uh, files back to the server, getting them rotated for you, and red eye removed, and then coming back again. So there's, there's some quite clever things uh, going on. But I think the, the, the real strength of these applications, the reason I myself, for example, use them, is because they, um, they put your data in the cloud. They put your data out on the, uh, out on the, on the net, 
Um, so, you know, if ever you've had a hard disk go on your laptop or anything, you'll know the advantages of that. The ability to just move from uh, machine to machine, um, laptop to laptop, and, and find your data in the same place. And obviously the whole question of collaboration, the ability to share documents with people without having to first start to think, where am I going to place this document, um, send somebody a link or whatever. So things like Google Docs, you know, excellent uh, in, this, in this regard. And because of that, to me, it doesn't really matter whether they uh, ever achieve the, the, the complete functionality of something like Word or whatever, because um, the, the, the benefit is not in the functionality. The benefit is in this, addi this additional set of uh, um, tools which don't really have a parallel um, in Word and Excel uh, prior to this. Um, so I think I see that as exciting, um, but I don't really see that the, at the moment the gadget, uh, the gadget space is fa fairly boring. Um, it's, they tend to be siloed um, gadgets, not talking to each other. You have a little uh, weather gadget and you have a, a stock gadget and there's no relationship between them. Um, they look great, you know, there's loads of really nice flash uh, uh, applications knocking around. Um, but there's nothing there that's very interesting in the same way that the uh, web application space is interesting. However, um, what are the limitations of, of where we're at now? Well, the, the web applications that we're talking about, it, the browser isn't always the, the right uh, model, uh, the right paradigm for um, dealing with um, these kinds of applications. So the number of times, I don't know if you're the same as me, but the number of times you're sitting there with your um, spreadsheet in Google Docs or your, your document and you sort of go to the file menu to press save, um, you know, that kind of uh, almost instinctive uh, from your use of desktop applications, uh, almost instinctive uh, way that you, you sort of, uh, uh, the mental model that you build of how you're interacting with this application. But of course it doesn't really fit because um, you know, you're actually still in a browser. Um, you're still in a, in a web browser. Um, the, the idea of having your calendar in the way that you would traditionally uh, something that just sort of sits there on your desktop all day long, now it's in the browser, you've got the possibility of accidentally closing it, um, this kind of thing. So, th so the browser, although it's, it's great that the, the, these things are, are being pushed forwards um, and the, uh, uh, these, these kinds of applications are, um, are, are really pushing the browser to its limits, I think. Um, as I said before, the, the limitations of the gadget uh, 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 space is that they, they're siloed, they don't really talk to each other. Um, and then there's a broader limitation that I would say, which is really where my interest in this whole space comes in, um, which is that building traditional desktop applications is far too difficult. So if you see it as a sort of spectrum, there's the web applications uh, coming from the web increasingly coming onto the desktop, and I'm saying that the, uh, the, the browser model isn't quite right to host them, but then from the other end of the spectrum, I'm saying that it, applications that you would normally break open your C++ compiler for, get Java out and start building, those kinds of applications shouldn't really need to be built in those languages anymore. Um, there is a possibility now, particularly um, applications that, that uh, what I call internet facing, um, they shouldn't really need to be uh, using those kinds of languages. It's, 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 a, it's a, a heavy hammer to, to crack a nut. So I'm throwing in there another limitation of the, of the current state of, uh, of development, which is that um, not just web applications, points to be made on those, but also desktop applications are too difficult to build at the moment. So what is it that we're trying to do in this context? And this isn't really about um, sort of, uh, here's a piece of software, go and buy it, because actually it's not for sale. So this isn't meant to be like a, a, a product pitch as such. This is, um, this is a, a kind of discussion about some of the ideas that we're uh, using and come of some of the sort of, um, I guess, philosophies that we're applying to, to try and solve these problems. Um, uh, so goal number one, we're trying to, we're trying to make it so that any uh, any document, uh, whether it's Flash or HTML, XHTML, can be turned into a desktop application, even if you don't control that document, even if it's somebody else's document out on the web um, or Flash application or whatever. You should be able to make that into a desktop application on your uh, desktop. Um, we want to give web applications, when you're writing a web application, we want to give it the same kind of features 
um, that you would normally expect when you're writing uh, a C++ program um, on the desktop. So we want to be able to have uh, windows that dock to the side of the screen and auto-hide, transparency, opacity. Um, we want to be able to write to the system tray. Um, I wrote a, a document a few years ago for a, a W3C uh, event called, um, uh, good question, I can't remember what it was called actually, but it was along the lines of uh, uh, towards a standards-based virtual machine. And the idea here is to have a virtual machine that sits above the operating system, but not in the sort of Java way, uh, not in the sort of bits and bytes virtual machine, but a virtual machine uh, in the sense of um, a, a set of languages um, like HTML, XHTML, um, declarative uh, markup um, that can sit between your application and the operating system. Um, so that's what we're talking about here. That, that language having access uh, to the OS in, in such a way as to produce slick looking applications, um, but at the same time it's, it's using uh, standard technologies that are uh, well established on the internet. Um, so we want to be able to build internet facing desktop applications faster than we would be able to do with uh, say C++ or Java. Um, we want to get a lot of reuse as a, 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 a very important goal. We want to be able to make it so that somebody's um, application built, say, with HTML um, can become a desktop application, as I've said, but then can also become a widget in some other application. Um, so something like uh, Google Maps can become a small widget on, a, on another application. And if I, if I need five maps on a page, I've got five occurrences of, of the Google Maps. So you take something which is a sort of page size and becomes uh, a widget size. We want to get reuse um, from, the, uh, from the coding effort. And then all of this we want to be uh, created using standard languages. Um, we want to, uh, want to make it so that the, if certainly by building on XHTML, um, we're building on something that people are already very familiar with. So we want to be able to get that kind of power um, out of uh, the, the uh, um, the language that people are, are, are used to, um, normally just for sort of basic markup. Okay, so Sidewinder is our framework that tries to um, take us towards some of these goals. So we have this application called Sidewinder. We actually have two, two pieces of software. One is called Forms Player, which is an XForms processor, conforms to the W3C's uh, XForms uh, standard. Um, and the other is a uh, um, Sidewinder, which uh, is responsible for trying to do the things that I've just described. And it's mainly Sidewinder that I'll show now um, as, I, as I try and illustrate some of the points that, that I've been making. So at its most basic, Sidewinder is a, a host. Remember I said that we want any document to be able to be a desktop application. So Sidewinder at its most basic is a, is a host for, uh, for these um, uh, well, for anything. Let's, let's have a look at one. So, I don't know if people have come across Your Minis, I'm sure you have. Um, Your Minis is a, a site where you can go and get uh, Flash uh, widgets, gadgets. Um, so here, I'll just show you the source of this first. Here we've got a, a basic um, XHTML page. I don't, can you see that? Is it sort of legible? Sorry about that. Looks a bit small. But basically the structure is it's, it's, a, it's an XHTML page. Can you hear me if I'm turning facing this way? It's an XHTML page, a little bit of CSS at the top, and then the, these three or four lines at the bottom here are just the, the um, HTML that you would get off their site to embed in your blog or whatever. You, you know the, the score, the, the, these kind of gadget widget things that are are all the rage at the moment. You go to the site, you choose the one you want, you configure it to say, I want the weather in Palo Alto or whatever, and then you take the markup and then you go and uh, uh, put it into your uh, blog. So uh, that now is something that Sidewinder can deal with. And so there we have uh, a desktop application containing the weather. Okay, big deal. I mean, obviously, you can see that it's uh, HTML, and it's, it's, it's HTML being hosted inside uh, Sidewinder. What we do next, though, is if we take the same widget, but this time we add some metadata at the top, and we say that the position we want this widget to be in is the top right. We want it to auto-hide. We want it to anchor itself to the top right position. 
Um, the width of it will be 250 pixels, the height 100, and we say Chrome false, so we turn off the, uh, the menu and the, and the uh, system close that you saw uh, in that, in that uh, thing. If you look down the bottom, uh, you'll see that the widget is exactly the same as it was before. There's the little bit of markup embedded there. Um, oh, one, one other meta property, we've said the transparency color to use is 123456, and then I've just made sure that I've set the background on the HTML element to be 123456. So I'm sure you can guess what's supposed to happen. We get the same widget now. Dock to the top right. You can see that it's uh, transparent. The, the, the 123456 of the background has now been replaced with a transparent. If I move the mouse over, you can see that it's still the same widget. The, the, all the functionality is still there as they wanted. If I move the mouse off, it auto hides. Move the mouse back, it reveals itself again. So the idea is that two things, really. One is that we're using standard languages to try and achieve our goal of, of creating applications. The second is that we're uh, using other people's applications to create applications. I'll give another example. Um, this one runs Sidewinder from the command line. And what it's going to do here, all of the properties that you just saw in the meta tag, in the meta uh, sitting at the top of the document, the meta um, properties at the top, uh, you know, position, top right, transparency, this kind of thing, all of those are also available from the command line. So here we say open Sidewinder. We give it the URL of um, actually an Adobe demo, so, so that I can prove that I have no control over this application. Um, it's, uh, it's the Flex Store demo that they, that they do on their site. Um, so you see the URL there, HTTP slash uh, examples, blah, 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 all the way through to the, uh, to the hash. Then it says hash meta, and then this is a, a technique we devised, which is basically X pointer like. I don't know if you've come across X pointer, but it's X pointer like in the sense that you can um, uh, put um, uh, extra information into the URL. And then we say, right, we want the width to be uh, 1,000 pixels, height 600. We want the position to be at the bottom, auto hide, same as before, auto hide. And we're saying that the title, the, the title that should appear in the, um, uh, in the application uh, title position uh, should be flex store. Um, okay, so now I run that from the command line. Ignore a few script errors if you would. But basically, we now have their application running inside Sidewinder again. Does everything that you would expect it to. Uh, you can see the title there at the top left is Flex Store. If I move the mouse off, it auto hides to the bottom because that's what I told it to do. I told it to auto hide and I told it to dock itself to the bottom. If I move the mouse down the bottom, whoop, up it comes again. So, again, same principle. Use somebody else's application to make your applications, or rather, using web applications to make desktop applications. Um, and as you can see, what I mean by desktop is I mean I don't mean that we're trying to uh, mimic uh, Microsoft Word or whatever. I mean simply that we're, we're giving the desktop experience to the user outside of the browser, um, and using uh, applications that are are on the web. You know, well, web applications. So creating desktop applications with web applications. But trying not to touch it, well, we, in this case, we can't touch it. There's nothing we can do to that application. It's on somebody else's server. So we've had to in, introduce this kind of uh, 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 packing information into the URL itself when we invoke it in order to, to sort of host this uh, application that's on the web, um, but give it the, the look and feel and the, uh, and the features that we want. So that's the first goal. Uh, any, any document can be a desktop application. Just notice a spelling mistake there. Apologize. So um, 
The second thing was that, that, that I said before in my, my initial list was that we want to be able to provide uh, desktop-like features to, um, uh, to web applications when they're running uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in this framework. So once they're running inside Sidewinder, we want to try and provide the um, uh, application with, with uh, as many features as possible. So I've seen some, we've made it so that it can dock to the side of the screen, auto-hide, this kind of thing. Another thing we've done, though, is we've made it so that um, when a web application requests a new window, in the way that it often does with, uh, with IE or with the browser, you know, whatever, um, we've made it so that the application developer can get a hold of that, create whatever window of whatever type they want before then giving it back to the application. So to illustrate, if I say, um, ah, where's it gone? Okay, so there's uh, Gmail running uh, inside Sidewinder, dock to the side. If I open an email, and then navigate to a URL, then normally that would open a new tab or a new window. I'll show you the code in a minute that, um, that does this, but actually no, I'll show you that first, I'll show you that first. So that's, what, we, what we've done is we've made JavaScript into a, into a, a, a first class language within our framework. So JavaScript isn't just something that's now inside the HTML document. JavaScript is something that you can use to write, oh, sorry, that you can use to write desktop applications. So if I show you this, so that window that was on the right-hand side was invoked using this JavaScript here. I'll start at the bottom and work backwards. So the main function is called. The first thing that the main function does is it creates a new renderer. We call these renderers. There's a just the generic term for all of these windows that are flying around. Um, this particular renderer has been told to have a title of Sidewinder Google Mail, which you can see at the top left there. Um, set all sorts of style on it, which, which indicate, you know, title bar and, uh, you know, close uh, checkbox and that kind of thing. Um, again, same parameters as we've seen twice already. We've seen them once in the meta information that's inside the document. We've seen them once in the URL that we can give in the meta X pointer um, syntax. Once again, uh, same parameters here. Auto hide is true, width is 512. We create that renderer, which we've told to be of type XHTML. See at the top there, we can have plain text renderers. We can have different types of renderers. Um, we tell it to create it, and we tell it then to load uh, Google Mail into it. And then what we do is we register an event listener. And because Sidewinder is hosting uh, Gmail, Sidewinder can do all sorts of things. I mean, it could, it could do anything. It could uh, get the mouse clicks first or whatever. It could, it could do whatever you like. In this particular case, um, when a new window is requested by that application, we get in there first because we've attached an event listener here, and, when, um, and we've said that the handler for that event listener is, new, is the function new window. Up here, the function new window will create another renderer object, and that renderer object has got all the same parameters as, the, um, uh, as any other of our renderer objects. Uh, it's position, auto hide, whatever, we can dock it. And then we pass it back to the event through the event object. So again, this illustrates, um, again, we're an application that we can't control. Gmail is not our application, obviously. Um, but we're trying to augment the functionality. Um, almost like aspect programming, if you're familiar with that, that concept, where you, you're able to get in at various uh, key points in the, in the um, application lifecycle and kind of do things. Um, what we're using here, though, so that's the first thing this illustrates. Second thing it illustrates is, again, once again, um, the way we're using standards. Um, so you, I've mentioned that we're using XHTML X forms. Here you can see that we're using DOM2 events. The DOM2 events standard is being used here to, uh, to define the interaction between these documents, so even uh, between these uh, windows. 
So even though we're running on a Windows system here, but we could be running on a Mac, could be running on Linux, we've abstracted away that interaction between the windows, and we've used DOM2 events, a nice W3C standard, DOM2 events. Most people are familiar with it from their work with the DOM itself in a kind of contained and closed environment. We're using the same standard to define the interactions between uh, various parts of the, uh, of the environment. Uh, I showed you all that first, just in case anything goes wrong now when I try and show you. So here now I go to, so somebody sent me an email, or this is on, a, on the XForms list. Um, at the end of John Boyer's email, he has a link to his blog. So if I click on that now, there you can see that that's the window that Gmail would have opened. We got there first. We gave it a window, as you can see there, with the title at the top, Sidewinder Google Gmail window. There's John's smiling face in there. If I now move my mouse off, you can see that it is one of our windows. It's auto-hiding. It's docked to the right-hand side, as you can see. Because we had JavaScript over on the left-hand side, we could have done anything. We could have said, if this is the third window that you've opened today, put it in the top left. Um, so we've got com complete control over the, over the environment. The kind of thing you would normally be doing in C++ or Java, the kind of... Uh, um, control that you would normally have in a, uh, you know, those kinds of uh, environments. Um, we're trying to make it so that we've got that level of control uh, in, um, in JavaScript. So there you've seen um, another way that we are able to um, uh, create applications. So and the similar principle applies. Um, uh, we want to be able to open uh, in Google Docs. We want to go in, and when you say create new spreadsheet or open one of my spreadsheets, um, we want to be able to uh, open that in a, in a window of our own control and our own devising, positioning it on the screen. Again, increasingly turning it into a, like a, a, a Windows uh, MDI um, style application. Uh, but something that's still very, uh, the technologies used to build it are still very web oriented. So, so we're trying to build, um, so this is the, the spectrum that I said coming from the other side, we're trying to build desktop applications using web technologies. Um, we're not just talking about um, the, the web applications that, that sit on the web and, and how, how, how we can improve them. We're saying that we want to actually build desktop applications. If I want to build a, um, a chat client now, our suggestion is that we wouldn't go out and, uh, like I said, crank up uh, C++ or Java or whatever to write the client. Um, we would uh, have some kind of convergence with the, 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 the very clever clients that are written running on the web, but we would put them into, a, into the, a container such that it looks like um, and feels to the user like a, a, a proper desktop application. So another, so I've shown you some, uh, some of this JavaScript. I'll show you a couple more uh, applications that make use of this technique here that you, that you can see, this, uh, where I showed you how the windows are created there. So this example, again, pretty straightforward. These, these functions here just make it easier to create the windows, so they they're pretty, can be pretty igno much ignored. But basically, what this, all this one does um, is it creates uh, a host window. Um, so, this, so, so we're now starting to, to move more towards applications that we've got more control over. Um, you saw before that we created an XHTML window or renderer and then dropped into it uh, Google Mail or Gmail. In this particular case, we've written the, the pieces that make up this application, um, but we, we, we've done it in such a way that we want to be able to reuse them. So, um, difficult to explain really without, I'll just illustrate it. So, take for example this simple. This is a simple XForms application. Sorry, Raman, I'm not being very good at telling you what's happening. You've got to guess what's happening. 
<laughs> right, so this is a, um, an XForms application that it's, it's loading a video, it's a NASA video. Right, so I'm just, I'm just letting the video load first, right, so this is, this is you know, the, uh, a video that's just all streaming all the time out of NASA. Um, so, that's running in that window. Now, if we look at the actual source for that, we'll see that it's got the, the stuff that I showed earlier, it's got anchor, um, true, position it to the right, all of the, the meta tags at the top that I showed earlier. But then if we go down, that's the application. You can see there that that's an XForms output element, and the XForms output element has a value uh, of the URL um, of the video stream coming from uh, NASA. And then it's got uh, an attribute called media type. This is a new addition in the uh, XForms 1.1, which is the ability to um, say that uh, this output control should be an image or this output control should be a sound file or a video or whatever. So you can see there that I've just got one line of code. I've got uh, the, the URL for the video, I've got the uh, attribute that says please show a video, and I've got some style in there that says how big the, the video should be. So that's nice and simple, nice and easy. You know, somebody could have gone off and, and written this, and not that it would have taken them very long, but it, you know, they could have written that, and, uh, and there we go, it's, it's there. Now, what we're trying to do is say, well, that's, that's something that we want to reuse. That's something that um, we don't want to create an application now that's um, lots bigger than that unnecessarily. Ideally, we want to just reuse that, maybe uh, have a couple more windows that have some RSS feeds maybe coming out of uh, NASA and, and look at the, uh, the news. So if we go back to our JavaScript, we can see here that we create these four windows. One of the windows is a, is a host window that's going to contain our application. And then, well actually this loads an HTML version of that file, but it's the same file, the web app that I just showed. Um, so you can see that the first window just simply loads um, that video. The next two windows are XForms again, and this time what they hold is uh, RSS feeds. And again, if you're not familiar with XForms, it's very, very simple to do things like this. In this particular case, we load some instance data with um, an RDF feed. You can see there the URL at the top. We have an action handler to refresh, which uh, happens you know, periodically on a timer. And then the actual displaying of that is just that repeat there. Repeat iterate through each of the items and then output the title and the description that, that comes from the feed. So all of that together, so you can see we've got a video, we've got one file holding a video, we've got two files holding an RSS feed, and then if we then run the JavaScript file, It's now running in Sidewinder. Each of those three components is now running, and I can, you know, interact with the RSS feeds or the two RSS feeds down the bottom. If I'd have plugged in the sound, I never thought of that. Then the um, the streaming video would have would have played. So again, so you can see we're trying to make it again so that you 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 that's a simple application. To me, that's sort of moving on a little bit from the, although it doesn't look as good as these uh, widgets that, uh, that everybody's, uh, you know, the Your Minis and this kind of uh, nicely designed, you know, we're, I'm not a designer, but um, it's kind of moving in terms of functionality. It's moving, I feel, beyond uh, the, um, the basic widgets that are, that are, uh, are out there, um, except, but, but with only a few lines of markup. Um, wouldn't necessarily say that anybody who, who knows HTML could, uh, could use XForms um, straight away, but certainly it's not that uh, complicated and that difficult to, to move to this, to creating these kinds of applications. Um, sorry, I knew I shouldn't have docked it to the right hand side. <laughs> Let me just get rid of that one. And then you can see that inside. Um, 
messed it up. But anyway, you can see that I can move the windows around. Yeah, I've just messed it up. So Sidewinders, uh, you know, giving you the uh, different windows inside that you can, the user can then interact with. So each of those windows could have been, uh, you know, auto hiding within its own uh, presence, opaque, transparent, all of the different um, uh, attributes that we had before. So I've explained pretty much how we've got uh, the, the, one of the features that I was describing earlier, the ability to reuse uh, different uh, pieces, um, which is one of the key design goals that we're working towards in what we're doing here. Um, and I've illustrated that there, the ability to take a, a, a video that somebody's created or a, 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 a web page with a video on, take a couple of RSS feeds that somebody's used. They could be used many times again on different applications and in this particular case they're all brought together um, to create this particular application. Um, Similar um, example. We have, again, uh, an X form that's reading um, an RSS feed. This time it's reading the RSS feed. Uh, well, as, yeah, it's reading an RSS feed and then uh, this RSS feed contains travel information, uh, you know, it, from the UK, you know, like a, trains are derailed or whatever. Um, and then it's using the um, Microsoft Maps to overlay the travel information on the top. Now again, not, not particularly difficult, obviously there's lots of uh, um, places where this is being done on the server and everything, but the, the amount of XForms markup that's required to do this is very little. Um, so there you go, you know, the usual stuff. But in terms of reuse that I was describing earlier, if I then go to the, uh, back to the samples page, and go to the one above, you see that we've got the same form, exactly the same form, this time running in a standalone um, Sidewinder application, and this time using Google Maps instead of uh, Microsoft's Maps. So again, the idea all the time, keep, keep reusing, you write the application, uh, a small number of times, not obviously not once, because we're uh, we're not using it exactly the same. Um, but by uh, by putting so much functionality into the framework itself, you get to um, to be able to reuse the uh, the code when it comes up. I'll let it load and come back. So, so that, that's at the application level. We've been talking about things uh, happening at the, uh, at the level of uh, applications that are running within the framework, within the Sidewinder framework. Um, but where we also want to get a lot of reuse is down at the, uh, what you might call the widget level. So it's taken ages to load, must be the um, feed. So, so that was basically the same form, this time running in, inside a um, Sidewinder application. Looks like it's still waiting for the data to come in. So now I'll just show a few things going down to the widget level.
mainly to illustrate not, not so much how clever the widgets are because they're, they're fairly basic, these ones, but just more to illustrate the power, uh, again, of X-forms um, as a way of uh, creating these things. So here we can see a simple X-form. We've got an output. Remember before we had an output which was the video URL and it was showing a video. This time the output is, uh, is tagged up as geoposition and the input to it is a longitude and latitude. And it just gives um, a very basic um, very basic map centered on that point. This is running inside Sidewinder, running inside the browser this time. Um, and Sidewinder has uh, the ability to show the, the progress of the loading. It would show errors there if there were any validation errors. Um, and it also allows you to edit the source uh, inside. So this is all sitting inside um, Internet Explorer there. Um, to make that a dynamic map, in XForms, all that requires is that the output control is bound to some dynamic data. So in this example, we've still got an output control um, creating a map, but this time the map itself is bound to uh, some instance data internally and in a kind of spreadsheet-like manner, uh, you know, if you do if you change the data, you can see the code on the left, there's nothing in there that says when the data changes do this, XForms uh, gives you for free the fact that the two are, are, are kept, uh, kept in sync. So that's a key component of the architecture, is this idea of widgets being built on top of this XForms model. Um, because XForms itself is keeping everything uh, in sync, is, uh, is managing changes in that input control that I just edited, automatically updating the map, then your job is then to basically produce the widget that reflects the data. Your job isn't to, to get um, uh, involved in the actual um, underlying wiring of the application uh, in, the, in the way that we would traditionally have to do um, with uh, other languages. Um, our job here is, uh, when, we're, when we're programming here, is to just get into the nitty gritty of the actual uh, widget that represents the particular piece of data that you're, you're trying to represent. And you've already seen a video uh, widget that, um, given a URL, plays a video. Uh, but we, you know, we have maps, clocks, all sorts of different kinds of things that can then be reused on the form. So, um, final thing that we're, we're working on is Is, some, is, a, is to extend the platform so that the um, underlying architecture also then has access to metadata about, uh, well, about everything, really. The idea is that it's got access to any kind of metadata that, that you would want. Um, and this, I think, is, this to me is the most exciting uh, area that we're, that we're starting to, well, this is where we've been trying to get to for a number of years, and we're now starting to get close, uh, close to, to being able to do this. So what I mean by this, the reason I find this interesting is because at the moment the, the general sort of mashup model that people have is you, you, you take data that's distributed externally and you just mix it together, which is, which is great. That's all, all very well. Um, what we want to be able to do, though, is to take that data externally and mix it together with your own data. So if you're looking at um, a site that contains uh, listings um, of, well, not listings, but li uh, a list of events, then the events that you're not able to attend because you're on holiday, we would like to be shown maybe in a different color or to not appear in the list. So in other words, we want to be able to, the, you, you may still call that a mashup if you want, but we want to be able to mix data that you're accumulating as you go about your daily life and your daily use of the, of the web. And we want to be able to mix that with the data that you're, um, 
uh, interacting with over the over the net. So um, this is very very new. Part of our framework is not just the standalone applications that I've been describing, docking to the side of the screen and all this kind of thing, um, but also we can run XForms applications inside the browser uh, in like sidebars, footer bars, toolbars, um, explorer bars that sit at the bottom on the, uh, on the system tray. So this particular one um, is just simply looking in the web page to the right for any uh, microformats or, meta or uh, RDFA. I don't know if uh, people have come across RDFA, um, but it's a, it's a syntax for uh, putting structured data into HTML pages. So if I pick somebody who's, um, who I know has got some RDFA, this is running really slowly though, I'm not sure if it's going to work. So as you navigate around, the idea is that you accumulate data. So in this particular case, it's, well, it looks like it's loading, but it doesn't seem to be loading very quickly. Um, in this particular case, Ivan's page should come up. He's, it's an ordinary HTML page. He's, he writes in there you know, a description of himself, meetings that he's got coming up. Um, but what the, he's also done is then put various uh, bits of metadata in there to further describe um, more exactly the information that he's, uh, that, that, that's in his page. So for example, he might use a microformat or RDFA to say, this meeting that I've said I'm attending is actually at this longitude and latitude, very, very specifically. The job of the bar on the left is to, as the pages, as you navigate the pages, it just simply grabs whatever data it can find um, and then gives you the option of then storing that into a, a triple store. Um, a, a database. I'm going to leave that loading and the other side of that is to consume it. So that's you collecting data as you go about your, your, your business. So as an event that you think you might want to attend, you just say add this to my uh, data store. There's some contact information about a person, you say add that to my data store. And then on the other side, this is now bringing together really everything that I've been describing, these little applications, these, the ability to create very quickly small um, uh, applications using XForms, uh, using Sidewinder, docking to the side of the screen, all of these features coming together. The ability to then create applications that consume that data um, in different ways. So in this particular case, uh, it's just a simple, uh, simple XForm. It's, it's another version of the travel map that I showed earlier. Uh, this particular um, window will dock to the top of the screen. It will show a map. It will then periodically check in the triple store to see if there's any information that it should be displaying. So the two sides are joined together <laughs> in our minds, obviously, because it's not working. But, um, I don't know why, is there any reason I wouldn't be able to get this on the network? The one on the left? Anyway, I mean it's, um, that one's loaded because that's getting data off my machine. So all of those flags on the right hand side are uh, events and meetings that have been previously stored. So the ones in red are events that I've grabbed from upcoming.org and the ones in blue, you'll see some in a moment, are meetings that I've actually grabbed from Ivan's page. So Ivan has a W3C meeting 
wherever that pin is. Um, so, so that to me is the, uh, is, the, is the real next phase of all of this uh, work that we're doing, is we've now got the environment, we've got the architecture that allows us to create these kinds of applications in a few lines of code. Um, we've got the framework that allows us to embed things inside the browser. Um, we've now got the ability with RDFA and microformats to actually go and grab stuff from the web. Um, and so the next phase of, of what we're doing is, is to me, everything, everything that we've done up until now is in order to now build these small applications, these sort of nimble applications that can start to bring everything together um, and make our sort of calendars and maps and contact information much more powerful and flexible. So I'll leave it there. I apologize that I've overrun in terms of question time, but uh, feel free to ask questions if, if you want last couple of minutes. Don't feel obliged to ask questions. Um, well, initially, the, 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 the sort of thing I, I've been picturing is uh, obvious business-oriented kind of things, you know, the sort of salesforce.com style things. You know, so that, that top right-hand corner, I would be looking at, you know, meetings that I've got coming up with, um, you know, cross-reference with, uh, you know, my holidays and all this kind of thing. But um, eventually, I, I'd like to get it to the point where it's, it's everything about you. It's everything that you've, you've stored. Um, and it doesn't, you see, this is, this is, to me, this is fairly a crude manifestation of your data. You know, go to the database and find every point where you've got a meeting coming up. Well, that's, that's pretty obvious, really. What you ideally want is that data to be reflected to you at times when you're not expecting it. So I'm about to sort of agree to go out for dinner with my wife um, and say, no problem, darling, you know, see you there. And actually, I've got a meeting on that day. But because I'm using Sidewinder, in inverted commas, or a framework to have my IM chat with my wife, because everything's being funneled through this uh, common environment, then you've got access to the metadata. Hopefully, you can then start to improve the interactions all the way through. Bad example, but it, the idea being that um, you know, because you can squeeze all these applications through, this, through such a framework, um, You've got the ability to do clever things all the way down the line. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>